Jesus, let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we deem it a privilege to be in your presence this morning. Lord, and we just pray that you would come amongst us today, Heavenly Father, in a tangible way. Lord, where there's needs, I pray that you would meet those needs, Lord. Touch those that need a touch. Give those a spiritual lift where they're downtrodden and maybe discouraged, Lord. I just pray, Heavenly Father, that the uplifting presence of your Holy Spirit, Lord, would come and minister to those that uh, need you most of all this morning, I pray. Lord, we just pray that you bless the song service and, Lord, anoint our brother Albert as he brings the word of the Lord this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand this morning and put on the screen, John was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. <clears throat> John was in the spirit
for us is the king. Amen. recently she's right at the top of the class if not at the top of her class and 
I think that's a real testimony Amen. to the glory of God. And I want to give praise this morning that he's still the healer. He's the king of kings and he's on the throne. Amen. He's the amen. That means he has the final say. Not the devil, not nobody. The Lord has the final say. So praise the Lord. That really blessed me when Susanna told me that. That the teacher said she was right at the top of the class. So I just give glory to God for that this morning. Amen. Uh, does anybody have any prayer requests this morning? I believe we can still remember the Green family. Um, remember yourself, Brother Kevin. The Lord will continue to move in your life. And Joshua and David. Uh, Joshua and David, remember them this morning. Yep. Uh, anybody else? Unspoken? Yep. Okay. I'll just pray this morning. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you that we could come before you this morning and Lord we know that uh, you're risen from the dead and you're alive forevermore Lord you're here this morning oh God you're amongst your people you're in your church oh God we thank you Lord this morning that we're identified with the the true church Heavenly Father the church that's got the Holy Ghost oh God and we just thank you for all your blessings you've blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus Lord, you died for a compound reason, Lord, to save us from our sins and heal us from our sickness too. And Lord, with that in mind this morning, we remember our brother Kevin this morning, oh God, and his need, and just pray, Lord, for, for a touch from the Master's hand, oh God. I just pray that you would meet his need this morning, and for the, the Green family, oh God, this morning, we just pray for Tony and Lynn, oh God, and ask for healing there, oh God, that you would be with them, give them peace and assurance of the Holy Spirit, oh God. We pray that you continue to move and speak in the hearts of David and Joshua this morning, oh God. Lord, you said, being confident of this very thing, he that hath begun a good work in you will perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just pray for the continue, continuation of the work of the Spirit of God in their hearts this morning, oh God. We just pray for a quickening, Lord, of the Word of God in their lives this morning. And Lord, we just also pray for the unspoken requests this morning. You know what they are. We just pray that you would move and meet those needs too, we pray. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's sing a few more songs here, maybe a few more worship songs. Uh, Our God Reigns.
trust that's more of a song to you this morning, or more than a song. Amen. It's a reality. Down from his glory, we have a living story. Let's sing this one. Amen.
praise the name of Jesus. Amen. This one's been really on my heart this week. So let's sing it to the Lord. Praise the name.
album and I like to sing it into thy presence I come because we want to come into his presence this morning it's not going to choose to think oh I wonder what he has today sit there or maybe that's good or that's a good word or that's not a good word no we come to bring something into the house of God worship him that's what we come for to worship the living God and that's an individual affair into thy presence I come into thy presence I come where two or three are gathered in thy name you're in their midst and we thank you that you're here this morning we just pray help us to lay aside anything that would hinder us from hearing the word of god i know you can minister by your holy spirit even without words being spoken i just pray that you will come and minister to us this morning for the glory of jesus christ amen you may be seated well, it's good to meditate upon the Word of God. It does inspire us and it may trigger off a lot of thoughts. And you know, that's what I just was praying. You know, the Holy Spirit can actually minister without words. If you ever read in the Old Testament, when the presence of God filled the temple, they could not even minister. There's no no need to minister in the presence of God there's fullness of joy and uh, I, I like that you see sometimes we get a whole lot of words and the ministry is all mental and teaching and learning but the ministry by the Holy Ghost is something totally different and may the Lord uh, minister to us this morning I have a little interesting title for this message this morning and it's called what have you eaten lately what have you eaten lately i mean we can talk about natural food or spiritual food but what have we been eating lately <laughs> and you know what happens when we eat it's a saying but i i don't believe it really but they say you are what you eat you know they always say i eat lamb and i know people they eat pork you know but uh, that's silly but you are what you eat spiritually, it becomes part of you and it affects your life. That's why it's so important that we feed on the right kind of spiritual food, personally. Now, there is a famous scripture in 2 King 4, 38 to 41. And I will read it to you in the Amplified Bible version. It says, Elisha came back to Gilgal during a famine in the land the sons of the prophets were sitting before him and he said to his servant put on the large pot and cook stew for the sons of the prophets then one of them went into the field to get a her gather herbs and found a, a wild vine and gathered from it a lap full of wild gourds and came and cut them up into the pot of stew although they did not know what they were so they served it for the men to eat but as they ate the stew they cried out oh man of god 
there is death in the pot and they could not eat it but he said bring flour and he threw it into the pot and said serve it for the people so that they may eat then there was nothing harmful in the pot I like this story it actually has so much in it when you think about it first of all we're not talking about unconverted people we're talking about to, to converts to believers he he went to feed the the the, the prophets the, the sons of the prophets so it's not uh, you know uh, it, it's it's nothing to do with about being born again it's got to do being fed the right stuff famine has an effect and everyone is in need of food that's a, a, a an absolute fact in Amos 8 11 it says behold the days come saith the Lord God that I will send a famine in the land not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water but for the hearing the words of the Lord and I believe that every child of God has a desire to hear from God let's never never forget we have direct access through Christ Jesus you know that there's a time when you think oh I go this place or listen to this preacher or that preacher it's all good it's all ed edifying but it won't satisfy that thirst for God unless it's God himself who ministers to you and you can have that in your own little bedroom on your knees or wherever you are so Elisha came back to Gilgal during a famine in the land so it, the famine affected everybody Gilgal represents I would say the church it types the simple basic experience we've had when we first came across the things of the Lord so let's go back to the word the original word as preached in the early church so we can fight our daily battles so the Lord will send his word to his children during this great time of famine see that's the point if there's a famine out there the Lord sends his word he, he sends his word and we need to be able to receive it of course Elisha said put on the large pot large pot not not just a, a little portion he wants to feed as well put on the large pot and cook stew for the sons of the prophets so his word and instructions are to be followed correctly in order to satisfy the hunger we have you see that's another point we need to follow the instructions exactly how they are given and then it satisfies that hunger we have if we if we have our own ideas about it it, it never satisfies that hunger it may stimulate our intellect it may does some things it, it may make us more religious but it doesn't satisfy that hunger it absolutely doesn't so in verse 39 it says then one of them one of them went into the field to gather herbs they all played a part and found a wild vine and gathered from it a lap full of wild goods and came and cut them up into the pot of stew although they did not know what they were <laughs> does that sound interesting he meant well and he gathered stuff he wasn't sure and he put it in that pot that's supposed to feed the children of God he put it into the pot not exactly knowing what it is we've never seen these before but they look good or the same with the word of God we don't want to take stuff on board we don't know what it is the Lord has to reveal it what it is before we actually partake of it and here this man sincere as can be got the wrong stuff and 
and put it in a pot. See, many preachers preach false doctrine without realizing what they are doing. They're not doing that because they want to be bad. They just heard something and they put it into the mix. We don't want to put stuff in a mix that's not found in here. That's all I'm saying. It does not belong into the mix, into what God feeds his children with. That kind of food will not satisfy your hunger and thirst. It's like drinking soft drinks. You know, the more you drink, the thirstier you get. You need the pure water. That kind of food what, uh, is still served today where there is stuff in it that shouldn't be in it. It's still served today. In, in uh, verse 40, it says, So they served it for the men to eat. But as they ate the stew, they cried out, O oh, man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat it. Well, isn't that wonderful when you have discernment and when you know what is right and what is wrong, and they could not eat it. <laughs> it would have killed them. There is death in the pot. So these people had discernment and knew that there was something wrong. So we need the same kind of discernment today. We need to discern, is this of God or is this just a man's idea? Or is that the original word of God? I think it's very important that we are not carried away with any other wind of doctrine. So let us have discernment today. Even this morning, let us have discernment. Know the difference, what is of God and what is not. If the word does not line up with the Bible, then leave it alone. Leave it alone. If what you eat does not satisfy your hunger, then leave it alone. See, when, you, when you're in the world, say it this way, well, I can speak for myself, really. I didn't really know the Lord. I prayed and I, I, um, I knew there was a God and that was about the end of it but I tried to satisfy that hunger I had in my heart with the things of the world I tried everything possible to satisfy that hunger I, I would travel and just well travel on the motorbike through New Zealand just wherever you want to go it didn't satisfy that hunger then I thought oh New Zealand is too small I'll go to Australia and live in the back of a van and just go wherever you want Whenever you want, do whatever you want, and it did not satisfy. <laughs> and you, you can try all these different things. It doesn't satisfy that holy thirst you have in your heart given by the Lord. It's only got to be His anointed word that will satisfy it. So in John 10 verses 4 to 5, it says, And when He putteth forth His own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And the stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. So that is our portion. We know his voice. We've heard it before. We, let's respond to the same voice. Yeah, I often think about Abraham. He heard the voice of God. He knew God. And then the same voice said, sacrifice your child. Well, you better be sure it's the same voice when such a statement comes out. We better be sure it's, it's the same voice when it concerns your eternal destination. It's very important it's the same voice we hear, even in, in this day, the same voice, it has to be the same one we tuned in, our Heavenly Father's voice. And he says in, in uh, John 10, 27, 28 as well, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, 
and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. How wonderful is that? Amen. So we are living in a time of great famine right now. There is a time of famine. You know, people try to satisfy their, as I said, that holy thirst with the things of the world, mixed in with religion. I mean, you go to some, or oh, see some of these meetings. I just saw that the other day, a uh, documentary or something on different churches. One, the pastor comes in suspended on the wires flying through the congregation. And light shows and steam and fire and, and whatever. And a lot of noise and a lot of entertainment. That does not satisfy a true believer. It may entertain you, but it does not satisfy you. If you're alone, dying somewhere in a desert, that doesn't satisfy you. But knowing the living God does satisfy you. Yeah. Having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Then you can be anywhere and it won't make a difference. You see, it is very important that we consider these things. So... In this day or time of famine, what are we feeding on in this time of famine? That is what I'm trying to point out. What have you eaten lately? What have you been eating or feeding on? Is it spiritual things? Is it things that tickle your mind? Or things which the Lord quietly ministers to you? Reading His Word? Or what, what have you been feeding on? I think nowadays people feed more on, on YouTube stuff than on the Word of God. It's a, it's a trap. It's so easy to be entertained. But what have you been eating lately? You see, what you eat does actually shape you. It has an effect on you. As I said at the beginning, it's not that you lose your salvation if you eat the wrong food. You know, those people taste of the, the death in the pot. But they were still sons of the prophet, despite. The one who gathered the wrong stuff and put it in a pot, he was still one of them. It, it, that's not the point. The point is, what effect does it have on us as believers? Are we showing forth, well, the joy of the Lord? If you feed on the word of God, the joy of the Lord will shine out of you. Amen. People look at you and, and think, oh, are you Christian or something? Or, or you're different. And they feel attracted to that. And some actually have to, it has the opposite effect, of course. But what we feed on will shape us. As I said, it's not that you be born again if you feed on this or the other. We're feeding the man of God. So it's this way. What have you been eating lately? Does it satisfy your hunger? Does it bring you peace and joy? That is a very, very good analysis. If you haven't got the peace of God and the joy of the Lord, then you haven't been feeding the right, on the right food. If you feed on the things of God, it makes you joyful. I remember a time when I was um, uh, struggling, <laughs> trying to build a house and feed a big family and, and, and look after things and travel at work and all, all sorts of things. And uh, I tried so hard in my own strength. And then one day I realized that it is not the peace that passes all understanding. I'm stressed. And when you're stressed, you sometimes say things you wouldn't say, do things you wouldn't do. You 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 uh, appear to be, appear to be, a grumpy person or whatever it is. But I realised this is not the peace that's promised to us. And if you haven't got the peace that passes all understanding, you've been feeding on the wrong stuff. I've been feeding on worrying about this and worrying about that. The word says, take, take no thought for tomorrow. The word says, 
all you care is cast up on him. You see, I was feeding on the negative and it had that impact on my life. I was still a Christian, but I wasn't that joyful man. I was not at peace. And when I realized, I said, Lord, that's not the peace that pass all understanding. What's wrong? Where have I done wrong? What wrong food have I eaten that has that effect on me? And you know what happened? I was seeking the Lord, or as I said once before, about three weeks. And then in the middle of a prayer, he ministered to me. And you know, it was so simple. So simple. All he said to me, my plans, not your plans. Because I had so many plans. At the moment, I, thought, I almost smiled. Um, I did smile. Wow, that's repenting of the good things you want to do. Yeah, I repent. I want to be in the will of God. You know, that peace that passes all understanding entered instantly. It was, it was actually coming to the forefront. Say it this way. I was so peaceful, so happy. I didn't care about all the things I was worried about before. I had the peace of God. Absolutely, 100%. You see, it's not that it's not there, but it's not brought forth. You know, like fruit. If you have a fruit tree, by feeding it uh, fertilizer and the right stuff, it's not that you get a different fruit. But it gets a better fruit and the fruit will look like on the pamphlet you when you buy the seeds you know it will look like that but normally if you if you don't feed it right it never looks anything like that it's still a fruit but it's not what it's supposed to be and we are sons and daughters of god and we're supposed to walk in the power of the holy ghost and be full of joy and and the joy of the lord in, in us and have that peace that pass all understanding if we don't see it let's feed on the right stuff then there's still death in a pot somebody has mixed something into it that disturbed you you know somebody can come and give you some little whispers oh yeah you poor thing you know oh you struggle on on on, on, on the husband this and the wife that and you know don't feed on that negative nonsense it will have an effect on your life. It doesn't change you as a person uh, that you're not a Christian anymore, but you don't shine and reflect the things of God. I remember uh, my oldest daughter once, <coughs> she had an experience. She felt very tempted when she was a bit younger to put makeup on her face, just a little bit and, and all that kind of stuff. And you know, the Lord gave her a vision. She prayed and asked the Lord if it's okay. And then she saw like a lantern and the glass of the lantern was all milky and obscured. So it, it stopped the light from shining the way it should. And that's what it does. You know, there are things in our lives we do that stops that light not from, it doesn't go out, but it doesn't shine the way it should. So we need to shine the lights. Let your light shine before men, the Bible says. So then, you, you know, let your light shine. So anyway, the, the Lord will bring his word to you and meet your needs even during the famine in the land. Even if you have a struggle, even if, if it's a bad time or you have a lot of things on your plate, even then he'll bring his word to you. You're even in the natural. Uh, Bronner just reminded me of it. She said, oh, you remember in the early, uh, uh, maybe 20 years ago, 15 years ago, there was a recession. She said, we made more money that year of the recession than ever before doesn't affect you That's right. it doesn't affect you Amen. if there's a famine out there we still have the source to be fed from and I believe 
he'll bring us the food. I, I really believe so. You know, there is lots of food, natural and spiritual, available this day. I was just talking to Bron the other day too. I said, look, we, we, we have a lunch or something. You should see how much is left in the plates and how much goes in the rubbish. Food. Abundance of food. When I was young, we didn't have an abundance of food. Even all bread, hard as a rock, would be put in a pan with a bit of butter or something to soften it up and an old apple or something mixed into it. Everything had to be eaten. I heard stories from my dad when he was brought up during the war. They were poor as can be. There was not much food around. You know, everything they found, even a fox or a cat, all went into a great big pot with salt or something in a brine. They ate everything. <laughs> we, we live in abundance here. There's not a lack of food, but there's a lack of taking the right stuff sometimes. You know, it's, people feel attracted to eat the wrong food. I mean, it's presented that way. It satisfies for a short time, but it has not the right effect on your body, really, in the natural. But in the spiritual, the same thing. But not all is good. The after effects will show what you have eaten. Now, if you eat every day, just chocolates and McDonald's or whatever, you will, it, it will show sooner or later that you look at unhealthy, blown up something. Uh, it shows an effect. If you eat the wrong spiritual food or no spiritual food, it will have an effect on you as well. What effect will it have? You'll be grumpy. You'll be dissatisfied. You complain. Nothing's right. Nothing's worth doing. What's it all about? And then you point at others and, oh, she is this and he is that. And, and, you know, nothing satisfies. Not even natural food or blessings, no nothing, if you're spiritually dry. That's why I'm trying to encourage you, feed on the Word of God. And who knows what you need? It's the Lord Himself. He knows what you need. You know, when he rained manna from heaven, he knew what they needed to be sustained in the desert. And that manna had some, it was supernatural, heavenly food. You know, they didn't need to take vitamins, supplements, and all that kind of stuff. It was all in the manna. And he still feeds you with manna from heaven. But let's eat what he provides. And what he provides, if you eat that, you will have joy and peace and be a happy person. Sometimes people look at circumstances. I can't be happy because I, I, if I only, you know, I, I knew people, you know, they weren't happy. If I only had more friends, they had more friends. Oh, if I only had a husband or a wife. They had a husband or wife. Oh, if I only had a child, then they have a child. Oh, if I only, you know, it doesn't satisfy. It, but what the Lord has for you satisfies. His word for you, tailored for you. Just need to receive it. It has an effect on you when you're eating. Jeremiah 15, verse 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord, God of hosts. Isn't that a wonderful scripture? Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. Why? Because I did eat it. I took it on board. I made a part of myself. You see, that's where the problem is. Hearing the word is one part, but receiving is another. You know, you can have a hundred Bibles in your bookshelf. That doesn't make a difference. 
if you receive just one word, it transforms you spiritually. Peace and joy will be your portion. And if you have not peace and joy, then you need spiritual food. Say, Lord, feed me with this heavenly manner. I need it. I need it. I'm not displaying the color, that beautiful red color this fruit should have, or this beautiful size and, and juiciness or whatever. I'm not feeding on the right stuff. So we all need to do, all we need to do is to accept his word only. His word. What is his word? You know, even today, here I'm talking about receiving his word and all that. You don't have to receive necessarily my, my ideas, but you have to receive his word. And I'm trying to encourage you to receive his word. All we need to do is to accept his word only. Forget about that mix and what people tell you and try to load up on you. I've seen people, religious slaves, they hardly could, could look up and smile. Ooh, 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 you know, I've seen people like that, religiously suppressed. We're supposed to be joyful, at peace rejoicing, encouraging one another. Have you ever been around people who are always pessimistic and moan and, you know, it doesn't do much for you. But if the life of Christ is in you, you're happy. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, it is so true. It's so true. And I know it sounds very simplistic, but we live in a day of famine, like I said, spiritually and naturally in some countries but spiritually speaking we need to have the right food even during this time of famine not what whatever is in a pot it's got to be the right thing you see he's uh the prophet discerned what was in a pot and he also knew how to fix it you see that's that's the point he knew that there was something wrong in there and he knew how to fix it. He said, but he said, bring flour. Bring flour. Oh, what, what difference does that make? We know if you put flour in a stew, it makes it thicker, you know, but how would they take the poison out or anything? He said, bring flour. But that was spiritual. And he threw, threw it into the pot and said, serve it for the people so that they may eat. Then there was nothing harmful in the pot. Isn't that interesting? Here, he's got, say it this way. That's the word of the Lord. The prophet had the word of the Lord. Bring flour. If there is death in the pot or, 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 or uh, we can't eat or we can't actually uh, enjoy the things of God, we need the word of the Lord to fix it. You know, flour the flour itself had no power in that sense but it represented Jesus Christ I believe the flour his word I, I, I read I read you something I read somewhere flour has a significant role in the Bible particularly in the Old Testament it is often used as a sacrificial offering to God in various occasions such as during Pass Passover, Pentecost, Feast of Tabernacles, the use of flour as a sacrifice symbolizes the giving of oneself to God, as well as the potential for growth and transformation. Another one, the Lord Jesus Christ is so perfect, even as fine flour. Fine flour is perfect in its evenness, its fineness, its tenderness, and its gentleness. The symbolism of flour in the Bible goes beyond just its spiritual significance. It also represents various aspects of human nature, such as humility, honesty, and sincerity. In the Bible, flour 
is often described as being ground and refined, which is, is a metaphor for our own personal trials and tribulations. Just as flour becomes refined through the process of grinding, we too must go through various challenges in life to become better versions of ourselves. Wow! <laughs> It's in a way it's encouraging if you go through trials, you know it'll it'll do something for you. You know, we, we all have had our trials, but it makes you a better person at the end. If you can receive it. If you go bitter about it and, and hateful, <laughs> it, it doesn't do anything for you. But that's what it uh, uh, types, you know, bring flour, he said, throw it in a pot. Have a little, Jesus, a little bit of his word in, in, in the mix and things come right again. It doesn't take much. One word of God can change so much. I'll tell you what, just one word. One word. I remember years and years ago, and it just made it as a type as well. You know, many years ago, we were married and we had three, four children, and uh, fellowship was up and down a little bit, different people and come and go and, and all these things. And one day, Ronan was in tears. Sorry for telling a story. <laughs> she doesn't like me telling stories, but I believe it's edifying. She was in, in tears. I said, what's the problem? And she said, look, I haven't felt the presence of the Lord for so long. I mean, she had the right desire. She wanted to feel the presence of the Lord. And then she thought, it's perhaps we, we don't belong to a big church or we don't this or the I said, no. It has nothing to do with that. How big your church is, even if you go to church, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the Lord. And I said, look, there's a scripture where it says, he wasn't in the earthquake. He wasn't in the storm. He wasn't in the fire. He was in a still, small voice. And I said to her, you just can whisper, come Lord Jesus. And that very moment, that presence came into the room. And I tell you what, you didn't want to go to church. You want to stay right there. You know, that is what it is. One word from him one touch from him you don't need a lot you know he said bring flour he doesn't say bring flour and this herb and that herb and this uh special salt no just one touch from the lord one word from him can fix everything in nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 then he said unto them Go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And he says, go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet. Take it on board, have it, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. You know, you can give it to everyone. For, you know, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So that is where the devil wants to rob you. He doesn't want you to be joyful. If you have the joy of the Lord, it's your strength. Your life is quite different when you have the joy of the Lord. It's your strength. So what have you eaten lately? What have you eaten lately? Just give you two, three more scriptures in closing here. Psalm 35, 27. I believe he ate the right stuff. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. <laughs> I like that. 
He has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. And we sometimes, I'm not talking about a prosperity gospel like people say, do this, give us so much money and the Lord will restore it hundredfold to you and all that kind of stuff. I'm not talking about that. But if things go well, it's pleasing the Lord if you do well. It's not playing humble and saying, no, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do well. You know, it's pleasing to the Lord. Amen. Psalm 27, 6. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in this tabernacle sacrifices of joy. Sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Because we come to praise the Lord and give Him glory and honor. You know, it's, it's so true. Isaiah 35, 10, I read it from the Amplified. And the ransom of the Lord will return and come to Zion with shouts of jubilation. And everlasting joy will be up on their heads. They will find joy and gladness. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, that's our portion. And if we feed on His Word, on His promises, it will sooner or later reflect in your life. If you feed on negative things, you will, you will show forth negative things. Instead of sweet words, hard words come out of your mouth. Yeah, you heard the expression, people say, well, have you been eating sour grapes? You know, true. If, if people, or, or, or a lemon or whatever, have you been eating sour grapes? It'll show forth. People are not happy. They're, they're tense. They're angry. They're, 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 they're moody. But if you feed on the pure word of God, what he sends your way, the heavenly manner, Jesus Christ himself, then it will have another effect on you. It will have an effect on you, a godly effect. Uh, I'd like to read you what effect it has in, we know it all, in um, Galatians 5. Uh, or is it 6? Galatians 6. The fruit of the Spirit. Is it Galatians 6? Oh no, it's Galatians 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, Temperance, you know, not, not playing off your handle. Against us, there is no law. You see, that's the fruit of the Spirit. If we feed on the things of the Spirit, that fruit will come to the forefront. Doesn't mean if we don't, as I said, has, it's not that you gain salvation that way. It is for those who have salvation and those who have received Christ. They need to show forth the power of God. You know, we talk about, talk about it and sympathize with the power of God in, in the olden days. And we talk about the bride will have the spoken word and the bride will do this and the other. It is now. If we're the bride now, and if you have the Holy Ghost now, then we have the Holy Ghost and power right now. And we, we need to be aware of and what triggers it off or what makes it uh, shine forth is if we feed on the right stuff. Have, have you ever heard from people that have been, oh, say this way, in the prayer line, and here comes the word of God and tells you exactly what you need, have need of and how to get it. Man, that raises up. You know, doesn't mean that person is suddenly a Christian. No, it raises the faith. And they realize that's mine. It's mine. And you see, realizing who we are in Christ is a great thing. If we just realize, then we act differently as well. 
That's why I need to encourage one another in these things. In Philippians 4.8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. That's a good start, isn't it? Just think on these things. Feed on God's provisions, His Word. It will bring you joy and peace and happiness. It does not change necessarily your circumstances, it changes you. And as I said many times, when I had my first supernatural experience in the Lord when I received the Holy Ghost you could have locked me up in a broom cabinet I would have been rejoicing day and night in there you ask brother Joseph he was rejoicing in his little self you know it didn't need to have a mansion to be happy um, it, it is just like that I know some people lock themselves up I learned it at school we had that you know from monasteries and monks and what they do and some they have that little cubicle locked in there I don't think they were joyful they thought they're pleasing God by being miserable but that's nonsense the joy of the Lord is our strength let's have it it will bring you joy peace and happiness and if we don't see it in, in us then let's feed on the right stuff can, you can even say Lord please provide me the food I need what do I need right now? Please give it to me. And you start reading his word and meditate upon him. He will show it to you. He will feed you. Amen. He is not one that does not feed his children. How much more will the, your father give you the Holy Ghost for those that ask him? He said, you know, it, it's so, I, I just can't, can't see how we can, um, sorry, how we can, uh, be rich and live in poverty how we have the spirit of god which has all these attributes and we are miserable what well, we shouldn't be we need to feed on the right stuff you know when you walk out there's a pot plant out there it's getting it's supposed to be green um, and it's all getting yellow what, what's it called that plant peace lily you know a peace lily supposed to be beautiful and green it gets all brown and yellow why for a start it hasn't been watered secondly it hasn't got any fertilizer or anything in there same old dirt and nothing it's, it's not been fed it's still a peace lily supposed to be we're still christians we're supposed to be we're still sons and daughters of god with the power of the holy ghost we're supposed to have but if we don't feed on the right stuff, it doesn't come out. And we need to feed on the right stuff. Yeah, you know, we read in the Bible in the Old Testament when, I can't remember, was it Elijah, prophet? He was weary. He was, he was lying there, totally exhausted, wasted. And an angel gave him some food. Heavenly food is sustaining for weeks. The heavenly food sustains you. You see, that is what we sometimes don't comprehend. Oh, what difference would it make? It does make a difference. You get one touch from the Lord, one word, one touch, you, want, you, you will see it makes a huge difference. Should we sing a song together? Make me more like thee. Let's start with, no, no, let's start with Into My Heart. Into My Heart. into my heart.
something else. You, you know, you can follow all the religious instructions. And you know, I've heard the saying, um, you look at the women in church and you know the state of the church. I've heard that said. But some have long skirts, long hair, and long faces. Not the joy of the Lord. And that is not our portion. You see, that is not our portion. Let's sing, Make Me More Like Thee. Make me more like Thee. Of that peace, 
And if you start to get moody, you know the devil's at work. You listen to other people or look at what they do, you get influenced. It's not the word of God. It's death in a pot. If, if you have somebody whispering in the ear, oh, this, and you should do that, and they're deprived of that, and, you know, have a look at this, and have a look at that. You know, death in the pot. Anything that's not ordained of God is death in the pot. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we meditate upon your word this morning, and you are the giver of truth, the giver of life. You are the word uh, itself I just pray that you would minister to our hearts that we bring forth and shine the way we should shine that the fruit will be uh, visible that we are producing good fruit Lord for the glory of Jesus Christ I just pray that whosoever has been deprived of, of this joy of this peace Lord we just uh, break their bondage in the name of Jesus Christ and we we command Satan to leave in Jesus' name. Let the peace of God be the portion of us even this morning. Let us wake up with a song in our hearts. Let us sing even on our beads, Lord. I just pray and ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. We bring a sacrifice of joy and God bless you and have a wonderful week. We bring a sacrifice of praise